Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be using the single needle embroidery machine to create the school bus snap tab. I thought this would be a really nice gift for the kids to give to their bus driver. They can put their keys to the bus on there and have a little cute little keychain. Also, I've got a link to this free printable for this card. It is a, as I said, a free printable. You can just download it, print it out, and you're good to go. This snap tab file is from Creative Fabrica. You've heard me talk about them so many times. There is so much to offer on Creative Fabrica, including tons of embroidery files. So go grab the file, get the free download, and let's make a school bus snap tab. So here's what we need. I went ahead and printed this out in a brains. I just like to look at it just to see how it's gonna stitch out. This is the actual size. I've got two pieces of vinyl. You could use a piece of vinyl on the front, a piece of felt on the back if you wanted. I figured if this is actually going to be used as a keychain, they might appreciate something that they can wipe off. So this does fit in a four by four hoop. I'm going to be using the um, Innovis NQ1700E and it comes with a six by 10 hoop. I bought the four by four, the five by seven. Um, I bought a set and the aftermarket that works with them. So I am gonna use a four by four hoop. You can absolutely fit this in a four by four hoop. Um, I will link everything I'm using in the description below as well as these aftermarket set of hoops. I really like just having a variety of sizes. So your piece of vinyl needs to be approximately, let's just get a ruler out and be more exact. I just eyeballed it. So it needs to be about four inches by Sure we get the whole bus four by three if you have two pieces of vinyl or a piece of vinyl a piece of felt for the back four by three so you need two pieces of those i just grabbed some scraps i am going to follow the exact colors that they used or it relatively close to the colors they use so i'm going to use the yellow blue black and white the first stitch that's going to stitch is the placement stitch you really don't care what color that stitch is in but the next stitch after that, it's gonna stitch that placement and then you're gonna put your vinyl down and then the next stitch is gonna tack that down. So the very first color that's going to show is yellow. So I'm gonna load that on my machine to start with. So my placement will be in yellow and then the next stitch will be in yellow. I'm gonna be doing the snap tab version in the video. There's also an eyelet version and a ribbon version. There's also uh, multiple files in there. You have, have There's some that you can do multiples, I think three at once, and that's on a larger hoop, obviously. I believe a five by seven. We're just gonna be doing a single snap tab. So for that, we're going to need our snaps. I'm going to be using uh, cam snaps. You could also use metallic stamp snaps. Boy, I'm tongue tied today. Metallic snaps, you could use the little silver snaps, whatever works for you. We're just gonna keep it easy using the cam snaps. So I've got the two sets of the ones that look like a tack. And then I've got a front and a back. It's a male and a female. There's two different ends. Then I've got my awe that's going to punch the hole. You could also use your crop dial or whatever you use to make holes. I'm going to be putting a swivel lobster clasp on mine. You could also just use a simple split ring. Again, I'll link all of this in the description below the video. Let's head over to the machine. Again, I'm using the Innovus 1700E. Here we are at the Innovus 1700E. Highly, highly recommend this machine for a beginner. It is a bit of an investment, but it's not a machine that you're going to buy and hope to upgrade within a month or so. Most people that buy a four x four quickly want to upgrade. You can do so much more with at least a five x seven. I do have a five x seven recommendation in the description below, but this is even bigger. It gives you a six by 10 embroidery field, which you can do a lot with. Again, I'm using the four by four hook. So the first thing we're gonna do is insert our design. So I put it on a flash drive. This actually has a wireless feature, so you can use My Brother Connection and send it wirelessly. Since a lot of you use the flash drives, I thought I'll just do that. I've got a pigtail here. I'm just going to stick that in. You don't have to have this. You can stick it directly in the machine. This little cord just saves you some wear and tear on your machine. Now to get our design from the USB drive, we're just going to click on the pocket. Then we're gonna click the USB button and we're gonna find our design. It's right here. Quickly tells us what hoops we can use. A four by four, a five by seven, or the six by 10. So we're gonna click set. 
We're using the four by four. You can check here if you're not sure that it's 3.39 inches by 3.56 inches. So we know it fits in that uh, four by four hoop. So we don't need to change anything else. We're just gonna hit edit end. Here, if you wanna rotate it or move it in any way you can, but if you're putting it in a four by four hoop, it's a pretty tight fit. I would suggest not moving it at all. So we're just gonna click on embroidery. And we can easily see there's six steps. It's a four minute stitch out really quick, really easy. And again, that first step is going to be the placement. It shows it in black. The next step is the tack down, which they show in yellow, which is the tack down on the bus on top of the vinyl. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the yellow thread. Another really nice feature on this machine is that it is self threading. So, or automatic threading. So I love that feature. I'm just gonna stick my thread on. I'm gonna put the spool cap up here. You're just gonna follow the numbers. There's numbers to guide you all along. So you go around number one, under number two, up and around to number three, just like a sewing machine. Go down here, there's a number. Go up and around. I'm doing this at an angle, trying to stay out of the camera. I'm gonna stick it under number six down here. Let me get that out of the way. And then you're just going to pull it right up here to number seven. Over on the side, there's a little thread cutter. You can just cut it off. And then to thread it, you just push this little lever down here and voila, it is threaded. Can't get easier than that. Next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and load the hoop. Another thing I like about this one is it has this sliding in hoop instead of the one that you have to push down and that it gets kind of finagly to get it in there. All right, so we are all set to go. All we have to do is lower our presser foot. This machine also has automatic, um, it cuts your jumps, which is awesome. If you haven't had that feature, you will appreciate it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit start once we see the green button. And again, it's gonna put that placement stitch. Right, so hopefully you can see that placement stitch. I'm just going to slide my vinyl right under here, making sure that it is completely covered. And you can use a piece of tape if you want, or just let it set. I typically just let it set, but since I'm working at a odd angle, I wanna make sure everything stays put. So I'm just going to add a little bit of tape, try to keep your fingers out of the way. So again, I'm just going to lower the presser foot, wait for the green light and click start. I am going to use this just to hold this vinyl down a little bit. And just like that, we're ready for step number three already. You can see it is the blue, it is the windows. So we're going to switch threads. One thing when you're switching threads, cut at the top, Pull from the bottom. Don't pull the thread out from the top. Don't pull it this way. You wanna pull it out from the needle. Always letting the thread follow the natural path. All right, we're gonna put the blue on. Another thing, when you're putting your spool on, make sure that it does not wrap around the bottom down here. And again, we're just gonna follow that thread path. Up and around, back down. Under, up number seven, thread. Just like that, it's threaded. Needle down. So now we can go ahead and start. All right, we're on step number four. Again, I'm gonna snip the thread at the top, pull it from the bottom. And we are ready for the black. 
All right, needle thread. They're threaded, needle down, or put down. All right, I'm just gonna pause it one second. You can see I've got, you can see I've got a little bit of a tail right there. I'm just going to snip that off just so it doesn't get stitched down in my other threads. Sorry, I'm at a weird angle. Make sure that you turn your machine off if you're going to snip any threads or anything like that. All right, our next stitch is white. That's the middle of the wheels. Go ahead and switch the thread. Needle down. This is step number five. All right, we're ready for the final step. Before we go any further, we're gonna remove it from the machine. Again, you just lift that lever and pull it out, turn it over, and you can trim this up if you want. I'm not gonna worry about it. You're going to put your other piece of vinyl or a piece of felt or whatever you wanna use on the back side of your keychain, and you're going to tape that down. Turn it back over, make sure that it stays nice and smooth. Put it back on the machine gonna peek under there make sure everything is where it's supposed to be you could also use spray adhesive and you need your final color to stitch the two together which I'm going to do in yellow I am using a white bobbin thread throughout I don't really care if the back is white but you could make your bobbin matching if you want All right, so we're ready to do our final stitch. We're gonna put the presser foot down and stitch them together. And let's go. Now it's going to stitch the target for your snaps. All right, we're done. We can remove it from the machine. All right, so here we are back at the or at the table. So we're just gonna take it out of the hoop. Just double check the back. I actually like to trim it up while it's still in the hoop. I'm gonna remove my tape. And we can remove it from the hoop. And hopefully you can see the yellow stitching matches just perfectly with the vinyl. So it's a little bit hard to see, but all we're going to do is remove the tear away that we can. And you can use cutaway if you want, either works. I'm gonna remove my tape. And now all you're going to do is cut about an eighth of an inch away from those stitch lines. It's gonna be hard to see if it matches really well, like mine does. When you're cutting, make sure that you keep your scissors like this. Don't turn them like this, don't turn them like this, because what happens is the underneath layer is either going to get cut short or cut longer. You wanna keep them straight. The less that you open and close your scissors, the smoother your cuts will be. And try to move the object in your hand and not the scissors as much to get smoother cuts. So again, you can go as close as you want or as far as you want. And again, I'm trying to move the project more than I move my hand. You can always, if you go a little bit wider than you plan, you can always go back and cut. So if you're going to err, I would try to err on cutting too big. You don't wanna cut those stitches. And then you can get as detailed as you want. as far as you're cutting. And I like to use big scissors. Some people like to use smaller scissors, whatever works for you. 
I'm a lefty, so if you're not a lefty, lefties have issues with scissors because they are made for right-handed people and left-handed scissors, we learned to cut left, or we learned to cut like a right-handed person. So that doesn't work for me anyway. All right. So you can get rid of your scraps. Now you're left with your tab. And I could cut this a little bit better if I wasn't on screen. All right, so we're gonna take our awl and we're gonna go in the first hole and make a, go all the way through. And we're gonna go in the second hole, do the same thing right in the center, go all the way through. You can make it go either way you want. If you put felt on the back, I would definitely fold to the back. I'm going to fold mine this way. So that means I need to put the, one of the pieces that looks like a tack, I'm gonna put that straight in the bottom hole. Make sure it goes all the way through. Just like that, you can see it sticking out of the back. Then you can take either piece, either the male or the female. I'm going to use the, oops, I'm gonna use the female, which looks like that. Hopefully that's focusing, oops. I'm gonna lay that right on top so that the cup is faced up like this. You're going to take your pliers and you're going to put the flat side of the snap against the back side of the pliers. And I do have the snap kit and everything linked, and then you're going to squeeze, and we've got one connected. So again, I'm going to be folding mine back this way, so this snap needs to go in the exact same way. If you're folding yours forward, you're going to do this opposite. So we're gonna put the tack piece so it goes all the way through, make sure. Take the male piece, which looks like this. I'm gonna put it that side up like that. And again, the plastic side goes towards the back of the tack. Hold it in and squeeze. Now you can either thread your swivel lobster clasps through or your ring, whichever you want. I think I need to cut that down just a little bit. That will be good enough for this. Go ahead and snap it. And look how cute that is. So easy, such a fun little gift for the bus drivers. And I think they get out overlooked quite often and they put up with a lot. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, never stop making. See ya, bye-bye.